Hello from ChemHelp ASAP. Let's discuss how stereochemistry is affected by the SN1 reaction because it's very different from what we see in the SN2 reaction. So on the screen we have um, rows for what happens in an SN2 reaction what happens in an SN1 reaction. So in the top line we have an SN2. Notice we use sodium azide as our nucleophile, one of our super strong great nucleophiles. This is going to do an SN2 reaction. So let's put in some electrons and charges. Our nucleophile will attack at our carbon bearing the halide leaving group. We will eject the leaving group. And because uh, the nucleophile attacks from the back face of this carbon halogen bond, we end up getting the nitrogen down and the hydrogen gets pushed up to the top face. And we get what they call inversion of stereochemistry. That's the only product we get. If we start with this single enantiomer where the bromine is up, we will get this single enantiomer where the, where the azide is back. And notice that this, this other stereocenter in the molecule is unchanged. Chemistry didn't affect that one. It, it's, it's only at the leaving group. What happens in the SN1? Well, in the SN1, we do the same reaction that, or substitution on this same starting material using a polar protic solvent like ethanol. Uh, if we allow this to react over time, uh, our secondary halide will leave, we'll form this carbocation, and we'll get actually a mixture of inversion, which was what we saw with SN2, and the retention of stereochemistry. So somehow this substitution occurs where our nucleophile, weak nucleophile, ends up in this with the same orientation as the bromide that left. So we get a mixture of products. And when you see these mixtures of stereoisomers, it's very often a calling card for an SN1 reaction. So what's happening? In our reaction, we are ionizing our structure to form a carbocation. There is our carbocation. And now remember, carbocations are sp2 hybridized. They are flat. And therefore, when our nucleophile attacks, in this case, it's ethanol, a weak nucleophile. It can attack from the top face. And I'm going to try to draw this darker as, it's, as, as if it's wedged to indicate it's coming from the top face. Or it could attack, and I'll draw this dashed, it could attack from the bottom face. Now, whether it attacks from the top or the bottom face, we're going to get two different products, two different stereochemical outcomes. The top face would lead to retention, where the, um, the ethoxy group is wedged. Attack from the bottom face would give us the inversion product. Now, since this is a flat carbocation, there's not a real preference. There may be a slight preference, but it's going to be close to a 50-50 mixture. And that's actually what we see. We see about a 50-50 mixture of these two products, the inversion and retention. In this case, these are diastereomers of one another. One stereocenter has changed, but not all stereocenters. So this is what happens with stereochemistry. We see what they call scrambling of the stereochemistry. Um, the out, we don't have control over the stereochemistry in the same way that we do with the SN2 reaction.